All right, so here's what I'm going to show you how to do. It's mapping tempo to something that doesn't really have a tempo. So, no, I didn't draw all of these in and place all of these in manually. It's actually really easy to do. So um, I'll delete all of these tempo markers. So um, hopping down here, I found a starting tempo that I like that kind of feels like the, the starting tempo of this piece of music. I've also lined up the audio file so that the start of it lines up with uh, the tempo grid. So... So that's good. Um, I'm going to select this, hit enter, hop in here, and I'm going to select the time warp tool up at the top here. What this lets me do is it uh, doesn't modify the audio file at all, doesn't speed it up, doesn't slow it down, it leaves it alone. And what it does is it moves the grid. That's how I like to think about it. It's making tempo markers, but um, I think of this like moving the grid around. So at the start here, if I click somewhere, it'll make a tempo marker. You can see it up there. But if I click and drag, it's going to move the points around the grid point that I've selected. So you can see I'm pushing and pulling between these two tempo points that I've created by clicking. And it's moving the grid to adapt with tempo markers. Shift, click to delete these little guys. Um, so let's start at the beginning here. Actually get rid of this one real quick. Hop back in, tempo warp, put one at the beginning. So that's all good. That's all good. I'm going to put a marker here because I feel good about it. That's pretty good. In the middle here, though, it seems to stray a little bit before it hits the end of the phrase. So. It seems to lag a little bit on the front end. And you can hear the tempo is clicking differently now. It's slowing down, speeding up. seem to hit that a little late so I'm dragging that forward to line up with the part of the waveform I think it is sometimes you can see the waveform and aim for peaks in it but for this it's so smooth that really like this means nothing you just watch where this bar is going and note whether you hear it's behind or ahead you see it sped up in that phrase it's actually pretty good That's a little late, so I'm going to stretch that. And that's hitting that quicker, that big portamento. You can hear there, it's uh, lagging a lot. That's good. So a little farther ahead. That's a little slower, too. And that oboe speeds things right back up again. Hitting a little sooner there, like that. Ooh, and we've got that little pluck there. You can see it down there. That's a good goalpost. That speeds up a lot. That seems good there, that spot, but then they ramp it up a whole lot. That's a little sooner. That seems wrong. That's, yeah, a little fast. That's a little fast. That comes sooner. You can see the the bass plucking on the right side down there. 
seems to be sooner. It's a lot faster. So now that we've done all that, we got a decent little chunk of that tempo mapped. Um, so the cool thing about this is, I mean, this looks like hot garbage because you're just listening for where those points change. When you're not adhering to something perfectly, you can then delete this, make your mock-up, and then adjust these as you see fit. Another thing you can do, normally without too much craziness, is hop in here, change this to warp mode. Now you see that the whole thing shifts a little bit because it so it is going to be a little bit out of sync now um, with this just because the ramps and their values, how much tempo it adds, isn't going to be the same as flat like this. Um, so you can do that if when you're making the mock-up you want those pushes and pulls, but sometimes it doesn't quite work that well. So really just this is a starting point and then you can adjust later on. This is also great for... Um, Make an instrument track. Play. Why the hell not? Let's open play. And uh, load up a Steinway D. Four patches. Bada boo boo. So you can do the same with MIDI, too. You can perform something live. I'm going to deactivate this. Um, let's hop out here. Let's uh, actually, I'm going to cut this. And uh, right about here, so I'm going to turn off the click, I'm going to hit record, and I'm just going to do something. That's fine and dandy. Um, let me line up the first note with a measure here. Hit enter to open up my MIDI editor, and then we're going to go to, again, Warp Grid. Uh, actually, this is different. It's called Time Warp in the audio editor. It's called Whip, Warp <laughs> Warp Grid here. Um, you don't want this one. You want the top one. So here, I'm going to set a tempo marker at the beginning. Oh, that's good. Let's see. One, two, dun, 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 bum. So that's the eighth note. I'm gonna turn the tempo back, uh, metronome back on. That rushes a lot. I kind of know how I played this, so I can drag these right now. down a lot like that actually I think that's there um, so now I've tempo made this it's not the greatest performance ever Kind of sucks, but I was just showing with like extreme changes to show how that feels. Now the cool part about this is say, oh god, you hated that. You played something really out of time, and now you want to snap it to tempo. Let's just delete all of these. Now that I'm out of that window, and warp grid isn't an active control anymore, um, I can delete all this tempo information. And now when I play this back. It's now synced to tempo. And then I can hit this with a quantize that'll work pretty well. Obviously that was like a grace note sort of thing, so that didn't quantize well. So that's fucking awesome. Um, and then same with the audio here, actually. If you have a piece of audio and um, it was recorded live and you're fine with warping, you can uh, change this into musical mode. 
actually, you know what? There's. I'm going to set a time base. Maybe there's not a way to do this. Never mind. I'm ending the video here. I've gone out of my depth. Bye-bye.